We received the new procedure, fl instrument flight procedure from for Plittenberg Boy, and that's for runway one two. So what we do is we go to Plittenberg Boy. This is Google Earth. This is Plittenberg Boy. So what we can do in our GIS database, we switch on all the airspace because we're going to need all of the information. Here's some VFR routes, ATS routes, RNAV routes that is used currently by the local operators and aviation within South Africa. So if we zoom in to Plettenberg Bay, you will see it's next to George Airspace. So it falls within George Airspace. So if you go to our design file, there you can see the ARP, which is the era A ARP is the aerodrome reference point and if we switch off this TMA layer we can see the aerodrome, Plettenberg Bay aerodrome. So this is exactly the same representation on our ARC um, GIS system and on the AutoCAD. So now this procedure has been designed and it is our duty of the Civil Aviation Authority to double check if this procedure is compliant. So we recreate the procedure, we go through all the checks, see if the design parameters is correct, if the minimus is correct and how the pilot will, will the, this procedure be safely executed by the pilot. So there you can see the pilot will come in like this and safely land. And that is exactly the same representation on our AutoCAD system. So once this is approved by the PANSOP specialist, it will go through to the um, aeronautical cartographer. And so I will hand over all this information with the assessment of um, our um, PANSOP's assessment. I will hand it over to Jane Tree and then she will chart the procedure. But just for information purposes, this is the end product. This is the start. This is the end product. So every single aeronautical chart that is published on the website, on the CIA website, gets programmed and coded into the flight management system of the aircraft. So with each procedure, we have to put out a uh, aeronautical data tabulation. This will say you fly from this point, this is the Latin long, you fly from that point to this point, this height, this speed, and um, this exactly this table gets programmed into the flight management system and that uh, allows the airplane to um, fly either uh, autopilot or the flight. Um, the pilot will select the specific procedure and the airplane will do exactly what the PANSOPS designer um, specified in the design and, and he can safely execute either a landing or a departure. So now this, my task is finished because I checked the procedure and the procedure is with a few amendments. It can safely go to the to the aeronautical photographer and Jane. I'm done with this procedure. You can have this, it's safe and there's a with a few amendments. And moving forward on this, I would, I would now take the design file and the report that was submitted through. Um, normally we have a shared folder in which the information is. Currently I have placed it on, on the screens for now. So starting off with the procedure that comes through, we get a draft chart that accompanies the validation and design file. Once the validation as, as it's been approved, gets signed off and gets sent get sent through to the aeronautical cartography section. I will take what is given here 
I would look at the draft chart and this is submitted uh, by the designer for the validator to check and approve. The validator makes notes on it together with the reports in there which I would use to plot the chart on on the screen at the moment. These little lines are the buffer areas that the validator uses to confirm the information. These little dots that's in there are actually obstacles that have been assessed to confirm at the end of the day that they do not impact the flights at the end of the day. So this is the extract of the, the design and the procedure that has been created. These areas ha here are referred to the holding areas for, for an aircraft. You would find that there are specific positions and points within a procedure part. You would find this area which is actually the aerodrome layout so when an aircraft comes in this is where the intention is to land in that area we have areas such as the a danger area and re, uh, restricted areas and those a areas are important because the aircraft at the end of the day when they come through they have to make provision for those areas because those areas can be um, uh, when you say danger or restricted or prohibited, it could be perhaps in a military area where perhaps there are bombing that's taking place uh, or, 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 or certain, uh, what should I say, certain um, events that take place and they have specific uh, altitudes that they have to abide by. So as a pilot, that company has to be made aware of it. So hence, these are all plotted into the chart. What is contained here is put into the aircraft information. So this information we also get from the, the design report. This is validated and checked, confirmed that th this is the aspect that the pilot should look at together with the wording of a missed approach. Should he, has, should he has to use a missed approach, this is the process that he would follow. The plan view and then the profile view as demonstrated here. It's an easier aspect to look at it, to see, okay, if he's coming in through, which is this point here. I'm just going to turn on the waypoints there, which is these points here he would come in. This is exactly where he would start coming through to his final approach, coming through to land. And if he has to have a missed approach, in other words, if he has to re-enter, this is his missed approach, and there would be his understanding of how he would continue on the missed approach. So this will be the final output of the chart. On the chart you would see, this is the aeronautical chart that goes, gets published. On the chart you would see, we would also indicate the, the name of the, the aerodrome and the type of procedure for the aerodrome and also the runway that it is applicable to. We will also indicate the frequency that the, that the pilot would have to use when he enters the specific airspace. We also include the aerodrome information the elevation of the actual aerodrome, which is the aerodrome reference point, as well as the threshold, in other words, the, the landing position, the elevation for that particular threshold that they're entering through. We draw the, the, we plot the chart to a scale, which is easier reference that can be placed onto the FMS system at the end of the day, which the pilot would use. So this would be the end product 